Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The passage we'll talk about today is the Gospel in John 10, where we hear the voice of Jesus having so much to say to us. And that's what our topic is today, as you can see, voices. I mentioned at the 9 o'clock service when I was walking up from where I was seated that I did something that I usually do before I start to uh, uh, talk in the sermon. And what I did was I was brushing my hair away. But as you can see, there's no reason for that. And the reason for that is a few days ago, I finally broke down to a voice at home that's been telling me for the last year, get a buzz cut. The voice did not come from my wife who was here. It was somebody else. <laughs> and the jury is still out over whether or not it was the right thing to do. But the topic today is voices. Certainly, we all hear voices. And sometimes, voices communicate love and closeness. Now, we hope that those voices are going to be voices coming from a mouth and not sitting next to each other and emailing each other. We want to hear the voice from our spouse that tells us, good night, I love you. Other voices that we hear encourage us to do good things. Some things that we like and others, again, that we know are good, but they might not be so exciting. Seriously, though, there are voices that communicate a parent's heartfelt desire for the eternal well-being of their child as they bring their beloved child or their beloved children into the Lord's kingdom through the water of baptism. And then, as parents have done in this very service, they publicly speak their promise to raise their children in the Lord's kingdom, to raise them to be children of God all the days of their lives. And certainly, we are privileged to be here as the parents of Andrew, Sarah, and Lauren have brought them into the water of baptism. And as the parents of Maya have brought Maya into the water of baptism in God's kingdom too. So we are thankful for that. But in this communicated, saturation world in which we live, we hear voices. We hear voices, especially in an election year like this, that would call us to vote for a certain candidate. And also, we hear all kinds of dissonant voices every single day. Voices such as in the world of rap music that would purport to be entertainment, but actually they advocate drug use, violence, and abuse of women and others. And also we hear voices from protesters who are calling for peace and resistance to NATO, which sounds good in some ways, at least calling for peace. But ironically, when they're calling for peace, very often they use disgusting and violent means to make their point. And for these people with dissonant voices, we pray that they would hear the right voice and use a better means to get across their message. But as we think of all the voices that we hear in our lives every day, we have a question to ask ourselves. And that question is, who do we actually trust? Whose voice can we listen to that we can believe and follow? From the old days, the earlier days in our country, we had people that you could trust. Probably everybody in the United States trusted George Washington. After all, didn't he say, I cannot tell a lie? And surely Americans everywhere could trust honest Abe Lincoln. But as we take a look at the world of politics today, sadly, right now, it seems like opinions are so polarized, they're as far as the East is from the West, that there doesn't seem to be one person that everyone in the United States will trust and listen to in the world of politics. 
There just don't seem to be any George Washingtons or Honest Abe Lincolns right now in this moment. But how about in the world of religion, in the world of faithfulness? In our lifetime, there certainly are religious leaders who command widespread respect, probably even worldwide respect, such as the Dalai Lama, the leader of Tibetan Buddhists, a man that we can respect in so many ways, a man with whom we are in sympathy for the cause that he stands for. But as a spiritual leader, he's a Buddhist. He doesn't speak for Christ. So we want him to hear the voice of Jesus as well as we do. So when we are considering which religious leaders are trustworthy in their preaching and teaching, you and I really have to be careful. We have to be more careful now than ever before. And we have to ask ourselves the question, when we're listening to someone who purports to be a spiritual teacher, when we hear what they say, do we hear the voice of Jesus coming from them that proclaims to each of us the true message and heart and core of Jesus, which is, I love you. I love you so much that I came to die in your place to overcome your sin. Do we hear the voice of Jesus coming to us that says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself? One thing that's totally true, and we all know it, is the fact that no human being is perfect, and no merely human voice has all the answers for the questions, the problems, and the challenges of our lives. Today is the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. And the fourth Sunday of Easter, traditionally for many, many years, has been a time that the church sets aside to focus on Jesus as he calls himself our Good Shepherd. And in today's Gospel in John 10, we see revealed in a very simple way that there is one whose voice we can trust implicitly. And of course, that one is Jesus. In the verses that come just before the gospel passage that I read a few minutes ago from John 10, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man's a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. And then here is the key verse. And please read this with me. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. So sheep hear the voice of their shepherd. And in the Middle East of Jesus' day, the herds of all kinds of shepherds would be gathered together in one place, in one fold. And you would have to wonder, how did all the different shepherds know which of the mass quantity of sheep actually were theirs? After all, they weren't split up into little groups that were all fenced in, but they were all put in one fold. And of course, they're wandering around and bumping around and getting all mixed up. And I don't know about you, but I'm sure I could not tell one sheep from another when there are a whole bunch of them gathered in one place. But shepherds had to be able to do that. They were responsible for their own sheep. So how did they accomplish that? They gave each of their sheep, as Jesus said in the passage, they gave them a name, and they called them by name. They would name their sheep based on how they look or based on some kind of a characteristic about the sheep that they observed. Now, none of us are shepherds literally caring for a bunch of animals today. But as 
Mrs. Sherry mentioned in the children's talk, many of us do have pets. And when you have a pet, what you tend to notice after observing them for a while is that pets, like dogs and cats especially, have individual personalities. They have quirks, just like people do. So you can tell them apart. Or at least you can pick your own cat or dog out of a crowd. But in this case, when the shepherds would come to feed and water their flocks, they would call each of their sheep by that name that they had given them. And the sheep would recognize the voice of their shepherd. They would recognize their name. They would come out and they would go with their shepherd only. If someone else called their name, they wouldn't go. They only went with the shepherd that they recognized, with him and not another. So, what does that mean for us? We as God's people today are the Lord's sheep today. So we want to follow our shepherd and not another. And like the sheep in Jesus' day, we want to recognize the voice of our good shepherd and pay no attention to another shepherd if we don't recognize or trust that voice. Because one thing that is for sure today is that there are other voices that are calling out loudly. They're calling for our attention and our allegiance. Other voices besides that voice of Jesus the Good Shepherd. So as sheep, we want to be discerning. We want to understand and dwell on that voice of Jesus. And of course, we want to listen to him and follow him. Now, it's pretty clear that as we look at our own neighborhoods, the places where we work, the places where we shop, where we eat, where our, we run our errands, it's pretty clear that the world is coming to us right where we live. It's happening before our eyes. The world is living practically in our own backyard. The United States throughout our history has always been a nation of immigrants. And for the most part, for most of American history, the majority of immigrants came from Europe. First from Northern and Western Europe, then from Southern and Eastern Europe. And you can see that from the slide, this is a picture of immigrants who came to the United States about 1900, European people. The vast majority of these Europeans who came to our country, probably including most of our ancestors, were Christian in background. And if there were religious differences between us, they were the difference between being Lutheran or Catholic, Methodist or Presbyterian, Baptist, Episcopalian, Orthodox. While we differed in the outward ways that we would practice our faith or the ways we would worship, when you boil it down, the most essential elements of these denominations were and are the same today basically sharing faith in Jesus Christ as God's only Son and our Savior. But now, everything's different. The immigration into our country is coming not so much from Europe, but it's coming from Asia, Africa, Central and South America, the Middle East, from all over the world. And while some of these immigrants are Christian in background, a huge number of them are not. Instead, they're Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, adherents of a host of other religions that just a generation ago we would probably only recognize if we saw pictures of them and read an article about them in the National Geographic. But as it is, here they are, and all their lives they've been listening to other religious and spiritual voices. But now we have a new responsibility to pass on the voice and the message of Jesus to them. And without any doubt at all, it's infinitely, infinitely more important for us today as Christian sheep, as Christian people, it's important for us to discern and recognize the call, the voice of Jesus, our Good Shepherd. And the only way to do that is to become more and more and more familiar with his word as it comes to us in the Bible. Because most religions 
share in common a commitment to reality and faithfulness to a God. But only in Jesus Christ do we have the true word of God, the true guidance, the true forgiveness of sins, and the only true life this side of heaven, and also the only guarantee of eternal life in heaven with our Father. Last week, my wife Laura and I were at a six-day conference for the Pastoral Leadership Institute in Colorado, and they had a theme for that conference that was called Mountain Streams. And the voices of all the speakers painted in a strong and powerful image that pulsed through the whole time that we were there. They painted the image of streams of living water that flood over us in our baptism. Streams of living water through which Jesus, our good shepherd, came to us to wash away our sins. And the flood of living water from Jesus to us is so great that it flows through us to others as you and I live out our lives in imitation of him and as we live our lives speaking of him and showing him to others so that those living waters flow into them bringing them into the number of believers who have new and eternal life. So, there are all kinds of voices out there clamoring for our attention, but none of those voices is more compelling for us personally, and none is more important for us to live out and to share with others than that voice of Jesus, which reminds us of exactly who he is for us today and who he is for all in the world today, as Jesus himself reminds us in what are called his I am sayings, most of which are found in John's gospel. And we did hear the first one today, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He stood in our place. He bore in his flesh the punishment for our sins so that we stand before the Father as his forgiven and beloved people. In the water of our baptism, that forgiveness was applied to us, and his life is infused into us. And then Jesus goes on to say, I am the bread of life. He feeds us with his word, even feeds us with his body and blood, giving us the reality of his sacrifice for our sin in the moment to strengthen us and sustain us. And Jesus says of himself, I am the light of the world. So he is the one who lights the way for us as we walk through the days of our lives, giving us clear guidance to navigate through the challenges of every day and to live as he did, caring for others, seeing their need, and acting with compassion. Beyond that, Jesus says, I'm the door of the sheep. He is the one who opens the gates for us so that we can enter into his flock, into the body of Christ the church. And Jesus says of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the one and only one who leads us into the eternal presence of his Father. Jesus proclaims of himself and also of you and me and all of his people. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. So through him, we are plugged into the source of life that then flows through us so that we bear fruit, so that we bring him to others. We remain in him, we connect others to him. And finally, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life through our connection to him. We have already the gift of eternal life in heaven with him, and with all whom we love who have gone before us in the faith. So clearly, that voice is the one voice that we want to hear and heed as we live out our lives, the voice of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, and none other. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.